action. Hi, this is Daniel Hubschman with Hollywood.com. I'm here in Sussex, England at the Hundred Acre Wood, which is home to Winnie the Pooh and all his furry friends. I'm talking to the filmmakers today, and I want you to see what they have to say. So guys, um, I imagine that making a Winnie the Pooh movie means that you must have a deep affinity for the legacy and the canon. Um, how, how personal are these characters to your hearts? Hmm. Well, I grew up reading the books. We had all four of the Milne books on our family's bookshelf, so I loved them as a kid, I of course loved the Disney uh, classic shorts, had all kinds of story records and books of Winnie the Pooh, you know, the Disney Winnie the Pooh. So I had a really deep connection with those characters from as early as I can remember. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sort of new to it. I, uh, I had a vague memory of sort of Blustery Day and the <laughs> introduce, uh, introduction of Tigger. Um, but uh, I had never read the books until we started the movie and, oh, wow. and I was sort of blown away. Um, and absolutely convinced Ed, that this was a, a broad audience movie just based on the books because there was great wit and charm and humor in those books. Absolutely. Um, the film is very much a reintroduction of the Winnie the Pooh family to a new generation, a new audience, um, but there are more than a few familiar story elements to their uh, uh, Eeyore's Tale, mm -hmm. you know, for instance. So I'm kind of wondered, how do you balance the new and the old? How do you decide what goes and what stays? Um, basically in, in, in throughout the course of the film. Our mandate right right from the beginning um, was to return Pooh to the roots. And that meant uh, going back to the original Milne stories and and reading the books, like I said. And and from that, you know, we kind of selected eh, about five stories that we felt, you know, hadn't really been explored in depth on film. And um, we just set about developing them. And, and that became sort of the spine of the film. Some stories, uh, uh, left the spine of the film uh, yeah. because you know some stories took over as the main the right. main story beats and stuff, and and some were discarded. But uh, it all started with with Mill, and and you know we kind of started being we were very reverent toward Winnie the Pooh, uh, just the Mill stories and also uh, the the Disney featurettes. And throughout the course of the movie, you know it just kind of organically became our own. We, we started infusing it with some of our own sensibilities as well. I absolutely love the the, the live action bookend mm -hmm. at, at the at the top and back, mm -hmm. um, and and also I don't know if this had been done before. I didn't get to do all the the poo research that I wanted to do, but um, the, walking through the the actual novels and yes. the books, I, I felt that that was the freshest creative approach that that, that I had there. So can you explain a little bit about what what went on there? Yeah, I, uh, that uh, they did that a lot um, to great effect in in the original Honey Tree and Blustery Day, uh, and Tigger Two. And so when we started going around telling people in the studio that we were going to start working on Winnie the Pooh, uh, that was the first thing they said. Really? You've got to have them play with the letters and the text and stuff like that because it was just, in their minds, was such a, it was so entertaining and such a staple of Winnie the Pooh that they felt like, oh, you have to have that. And, and, uh, and they, they, they kept saying, you got to put more in. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but it was, we knew we had to have that in the movie. Now, the balance of, um, of, and I, I'm not sure exactly how much, so that's what I'm kind of inquiring mm -hmm. about uh, the balance between uh, CG and traditional animation. In most traditionally animated films, and including the ones that you guys have worked on, it's it's a combination of both. Mm -hmm. um, what, what was the balance? I mean, I would say just from a consumer standpoint, maybe 70, 30. I mean, how, how was, what was it really like in, in, in the end? Well, most of the... The digital uh, work that we did was what was in the the back end of things uh, in the um, the composite the, the background paintings the paint the, they were all painted uh, digitally mm -hmm. and then the compositing instead of obviously we don't do cells and, and shoot them on a camera stand anymore so the characters are painted uh, the backgrounds are are digital so they're brought together and then composited in the computer but prior to that in the process everything else is still the traditional way ha uh, paper pencil uh that great handmade uh feel of traditional animation uh it's still done the same way but we love the idea of how can we get that handmade feel of classic traditional animation in this digital world with this digital technology and we felt feel really confident about yeah. what, we're, what our oh, art it looks, is great. It looks great it looks great